Okay, I want to continue um, talking about E.B. White Moonwalk. Last time I, taught, I read the essay and I went over what the main conclusion was. The main conclusion of the essay was that the United States shouldn't have put a, uh, a flag on the moon. We should have put a handkerchief. And I mentioned that he, he put his thesis at the end of the essay. So let me go over that a little more. In analyzing and, and thinking critically about an essay, it's important to analyze the structure of it, to think about it, think about why you know the author does certain things. In this essay, the conclusion is put at the, at the end, the very last sentence of the, the paragraph. The, this is a one paragraph essay, it's nine sentences. And he puts his thesis at the very end. Uh, what a pity that in a moment of triumph we did not forswear the familiar. He mentions the Iwo Jima uh, scene. We should not forswear. Uh, we uh, we did not forswear the familiar Iwo Jima scene and plan a device acceptable to all. So, at the very end of his essay, he he states his his main point, which is that we should not have put the flag on the moon. We should have put a handkerchief instead. And I mentioned that the reason he put it here was that if he had put it at the very beginning of the essay, he would have lost a lot of his audience. Many people reading the essay uh, would have, they read, if he had said what he really believed in the very first sentence, when they read the first sentence, you can imagine some people just kind of ripping the essay up and, and, and getting really angry at him, you know, calling him uh, 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 somebody who hates America and, you know, uh, uh, and just totally re, uh, rejecting his thesis is crazy, and as the, the ravings of an anti-American. So what he has to do is to he has to come up with a strategy to state his thesis um, without offending them, and he does so by by putting his thesis at the end and arguing very persuasively from the beginning. He wins them over to his point of view, and then he starts gradually developing an argument. And by the time he states his thesis at the end, it, it makes sense. Whether they agree, they agree or disagree with him, uh, at least will seem reasonable. So what I want to do uh, in, in this uh, lecture is to go over the, 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 the logical structure, the logos aspect of the essay. And it's very uh, carefully organized, very concise. And so the, the very first two sentences they go together as an argument. So what's going to happen is like this: you're going to have one because of two, state uh, the statement one, sentence one of the in the story because of two, and you're going to have three because of four, and then you're going to have these are going to come together in five, and then it's going to break out to six, and six will be broken up into like six a and six b, and then eventually it's going to then you can have seven and eight. I think if I remember correctly, it'll be something like this. It may be a little different, but it's going to end up like this, basically. Uh, and that, that I may have made a mistake in here. Anyway, it's it's very uh, symmetrical. The essay is very symmetrical, and it, it develops very systematically. So let me just go over the the, the first four sentences, um, and I'll I'll abbreviate some stuff on the on the board. The very first sentence, sentence one says, "The moon, it turns out, is a great place for men." So in the very first sentence, we're going to have this moon equals great place for men. And then he tells you why it is. Statement two says, statement two will say, it says uh, one six gravity must be a lot of fun. So I'll put one six gravity equals fun, a lot of fun. And when Armstrong and Aldrin went into their bouncy, bouncy, when Armstrong and Aldrin went into their bouncy little dance, like two happy children, it was a moment not only of triumph but of gaiety. So the moon is a great place for men because on the moon you could, you know, jump up. And, no, there's no atmosphere. You could jump up and down, and and uh, uh, you're not held down by the atmosphere. It's a lot of fun. One six one six gravity is a lot of fun. So you can. Just bounce all over on the moon. So, and when Armstrong and Aldrin went into their bouncy little dance, and the bouncy little dance picks up on this idea of fun, like two hap happy children, it was a moment not only of tri triumph, but of gaiety. So that's why the moon is a great place for men, because it's a lot of fun on the moon.
one six gravity is a lot of fun. That's the first two sentences. And then you're going to have a contrast with statements three and four. And, he, and what signals that contrast is on the other hand. Statement three, sentence three starts out uh, with the, it starts out the moon on the other hand. So the moon is a great place for man. The moon on the other hand, so now we have a contrast. So I'll put a, a, a slash here to show this. These are opposites. The moon on the one hand is a great place for man. On the other hand, what is it? The moon on the other hand is a poor place for flags. Poor place for flags. So it's a great place for men, but a poor place for flags. What's going to happen in the rest of the essay, you know, the, the men are going to actually take flags to the moon. So these are going to come together in some way as the essay develops. But it's a poor place for flags. Now, why is it a poor place for flags? In the rest of the essay, at the, the very last sentence of the essay, he's going to say it's a poor place for flags because we should have put a, a, a the flag is going to represent nationalism. And we should have put something that uh, stands, that unites people instead of dividing them. But at, at this point in the essay, it's not because of that. It's a very trivial reason. The, the moon, on the other hand, is a poor place for flags. And why? Well, state because of statement four. Ours look stick, stiff and awkward, floating in a breeze that did not blow. So it's a poor place, place for flags because there's no breeze. Okay, now, just think of what's happening. This is very, it's a very beautiful opening. We got two sentences on one side uh, that, that contrast with uh, two sentences on the other side. One and two contrast with three and four. It's a, the moon is a great place for men. It's a poor place for flags. Why? Well, because there's no breeze. Why is, why is it a great place for men? It's one six gravity is a lot of fun. <clears throat> At this point in the essay, the person reading this, they see it's a, a short essay, right? And they're reading about the first time the human beings landed on the moon. So this is really uh, uh, a, a very important uh, moment in history. And it's going to be a remember, this moment when human beings land on the moon for the first time will be remembered for the rest of human history. For the next, in, in 5,000 years, if we're still here, people will be reading about this moon landing. It was the first time human beings landed on the moon. Uh, we still read about Columbus discovering America, right? As a great event. Now, this is this is the moonwalk. The first time human beings, we didn't just discover North America, uh, North, North America or we discovered the moon, okay? The, pre, the people reading this essay are expecting some serious discussion of the matter, something that they can take home with them, you know, that they can say, wow, that's what the moon landing really means. And, and you know, deal, uh, 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 deal with it in an adequate manner. You know, it's a serious event. It's an it's a earth shattering event. Deal with it seriously. E.B. White is not doing that. He's just playing games. The first four sentences are just playing games. He's just, he's trivializing the issue. It's a great, the moon is a great place for men. Why? Well, because people can bounce up and down on the moon. Well, I'll tell you what, that's not why NASA and the American people spent millions of dollars to get us to the moon. We didn't do it so now astronauts could jump up and down on a trampoline and have a lot of fun. And the moon, they already know it was a, it's a poor place for flags. Why? Well, because there's no breeze. Okay, this is just trivializing the whole issue. And at this point, we statement five, basically, what is statement five is in parentheses, and what it says is this. There must, in parentheses, there must be a lesson here somewhere. What E.B. White is doing, this is the way I read it, is he's whispering into your ear, the ear of the reader, and he's saying, don't throw the essay away yet. Just hold on. There's more coming. Uh, th uh, as he says, there must be a lesson here somewhere. He says, I know it looks like I've trivialized the whole thing, but there must be a lesson here somewhere. Just stick with me. I've got four more sentences to do. Four sentences. He's already, it's just only nine sentence essay. It's a nine sentence essay. He's already basically thrown away the first five sentences. And, and he's made the people, the, the, his reader feel happy and joyful. You know, this is all trivial. So nobody's going to get offended at him at this point. Everybody's like, oh, this is really fun. But they're getting tired of it too. So he says, look, it, there must be a lesson here somewhere. The lesson is going to be developed in is in in, st in sentences six, seven, eight, and nine. If you look at the essay, the first five sentences take about a third of the essay, about a third. The next four sentences is going to basically take two thirds of the essay. 
what happens, the first, uh, and, the, and the structure is going to be much more complicated. The first four uh, sentences were fairly short uh, not, and nothing serious, uh, no, no uh, abstract concepts. The second, the last four sentences are going to become more, much more sophisticated do, and, and deal with abstract concepts and important concepts that, that will actually lead down to the conclusion that we should not have placed a flag on the moon. In, set, in statement number six, he says this. He says, it is traditional. So now we're going to have tradition on this side. Tradition, it is traditional. So now we've got the, note of the idea of tradition. None of this was mentioned in the first five sentences. It is traditional, of course, for, for, for explorers. So I'll put explorers to plant the flag. So we've got tradition on one side. We've got explorers and we've got the flag. The flag is on the side of tradition and the explorers. It is traditional for the explorers to plant the flag, but it struck us as we watched with awe and admiration and pride that our two fellows were universal men, not national men. So you got this distinction between universal. This is very important. They're, they were universal men, not national. National, if they, if they were national men, meaning if they were represent, going to the moon representing the United States, then they'd take a flag. But they were universal men. They were representing humanity. They were universal men, not national men. They should have been equipped with something accordingly. He'll say that in a second. They were, univer they were uh, not nat national men but, and should have been equipped accordingly. He doesn't tell you. So what do, how should universal men be equipped? He doesn't tell you. So I'll put a question mark there. And should have been equipped accordingly. Now we go to sentence number seven. Like every great river and every great sea, the moon belongs to none and belongs to all. So on the, on the side of the universal is the moon. the moon. The moon is the universal place because no one owns it. It belongs to none, belongs to all. So the, the moon is on the side of the universal. Flags are on the side of the traditional, the national. And, and it, the moon belongs to all. And then the next sentence is going to be, it still holds the key to madness. So on the moon, we have madness associated with the moon. It holds the key to madness. Uh, still controls the tides that lap on shores everywhere and still guards the levers of kiss in every land under no banner but the sky. So on this side, you've got love and you've got um, the, the, uh, the tides that controls the tides that are universal because the tides occur all over the world. And... Uh, guards the levers that kiss in every land under the sun. So the moon is, a being, is, is associated with peace and love. And then we get to, that's statement eight, and then we get to the final uh, sentence. He says, what a pity that in a moment of triumph we did not forswear the familiar Iwo Jima scene. For the first time he introduces Iwo Jima. As, that should come as a shock because the universe, the Iwo Jima was a bloody war in world, a bloody scene in World War II where the United, uh, the American army, you know, won the battle and they planted the American flag on the top of the uh, the, the the mound and you know for for Iwo, Iwo Jima e, 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 uh, evokes images of bloodshed war what E.B. White is saying is he doesn't want us to bring flags to the moon and just tr uh, export our violence and wars to the moon he wants he, he wants to keep the moon free of Iwo Jima he doesn't want if we're going to go to the moon leave Iwo Jima behind leave flags behind go in peace and love what a pity that in a moment of triumph we did not forswear the familiar Iwo Jima saying. So Iwo Jima, Iwo Jima is on this side now. Now Iwo Jima, that is a great example of pathos. He's bringing emotion into it. Iwo Jima evokes tremendous uh, feelings of repugnance of, against violence and war. What a pity that in a moment of triumph we did not forswear the familiar Iwo Jima saying. And plant it instead, a device acceptable to all. Plant something that everybody can identify with. Uh, and, he, and he suggests that a limp white handkerchief, perhaps symbol of the common cold, which like the moon affects us all, unites us all. So the handkerchief basically is a universal symbol because everybody gets sick, everybody dies, everybody's fragile. That's what the, the handkerchief represents. It unifies humanity. The United States got to the moon because of power. We are the most powerful nation in the, in the world in the world at the time. And he's saying, you know, let's, when we get there, let's have a hu little humility. Let's, let, let's sh bring the world together and around some, something that has a, a, a wisdom to it, which is recognizing our human fragility, the handkerchief.